Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and this is a subscriber request. Today's request comes from Giovanni Izzo. Giovanni, all the way from Italy, asked me how he could get faster with Finale. <laughs> now, it's quite a broad question without a single quick answer, but it did inspire me to think about some of the things that make me fast in Finale. And then I thought, you know what? Everyone loves a top 10 list. So, Giovanni, although I can't pack 25 years of experience into a single video, hopefully what I'm calling Jason's top 10 efficiency tips will help you and everyone else get just a little bit faster with Finale. Before I get into that, I just want to show you how you can submit a request for a video. First of all, you must be a subscriber, so click the subscribe button on YouTube and or sign up for the mailing list by clicking this link on the website. Then just send me an email here with your request. Lastly, if your request does make it to video, please consider a donation to the cause with whatever you can. It would be most appreciated. More details can be found following the link in the description below or directly on the subscriber request page of the website. Now, let's take a look at those tips. I should preface this list by saying that this whole topic is extremely subjective. I'm positive I will miss things that many people consider essential, and I may mention some things that don't even make some other people's top 100, but this is my list of things that work for my brain, so, you know, even if you don't agree with everything, hopefully you may pick up a few tricks along the way. So let's get right to the list. Number 10, learn the shortcuts for commonly used windows. There are several windows in Finale that I go in and out of a lot. For example, the document options. And you'll see that some of these windows actually have uh, shortcuts. So learn these shortcuts. You know, that's Command Option A. So instead of going and fishing for it in the document menu, just do Command Option A, and it will pull up the document options for you. Some other ones that I use a lot are Command Comma to pull up the uh, Finale preferences. Command K pulls up the score manager, which I'm in and out of a lot. So that's a that's a big one that I use a lot. And actually, one that I use quite often is uh, Shift Command M to pull up the Fit Measures dialog box. Um, I, I use this uh, menu a lot, believe it or not. And I actually wish that there were other uh, items in here that had uh, shortcuts. For example, the edit measure number regions doesn't have a shortcut. But uh, if you use something like Keyboard Meister, you can program your own shortcuts for these too. So on my computer, I happen to have programmed Option M to pull up that measure number uh, dialog box for me. So you know, even if the the shortcut doesn't exist for a window that you use a lot, you know, you can use something like Keyboard Maestro to uh, to uh, to do that. So anyway, you know, learn the shortcuts for the commonly used windows. That's definitely going to help. Number nine, the 6789 transposition shortcuts. This is actually something I covered in the very last uh, subscriber request video. Um, but the if, if you're using the selection tool, the 6 key will take any selection and transpose it down a diatonic step. And you can do that as many times as you need. The 7 key will transpose up a step. And again, you can do that as many times as you need. The 8 key will transpose something down an octave. Uh, and again, you can keep going if you need to. And the 9 key will transpose up an octave. Um, it seems like a simple thing, but if you're not aware that the uh, 6, 7, 8, 9 key will do that, you're going to save yourself a lot of time going in and out of the transpose window because um, it's really easy to, if you need this line to go up a third, just put, press 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, so that's that's another one for me is the 6-7-8-9 transposition uh, shortcuts. Number eight, switching tools. Now, one of the things that can be a little bit slow in Finale is switching back and forth between different tools. Now, you have this main tool palette, which makes it somewhat easy, if, especially when you know exactly what each of these tools icons uh, mean. Um, it's just easy to just click the tool or whatever. But it can get just fractionally slow. Always bring your mouse over to wherever your tool palette is. So, uh, And actually, you can use the tools menu, which is even slower than that. But uh, there are some techniques that can help speed this up. And uh, it's kind of a personal choice. And I encourage you to figure out what's going to work best for you. In the very first Hot Tips video, I showed you how to program meta tools for tools. So you can use that. On a Mac, you can have up to seven keystroke combinations to switch tools. Uh, on a Windows, you can have 11, oddly. Um, but on, you know, I have them programmed here, so if I uh, press Control-F, you'll see it switches to the speedy entry tool. Control-G will switch to the articulation tool. Control-H will switch to the expression tool. And you can program these however you want, uh, although you're limited to 7 on a Mac and 11 on Windows. The other important technique is the escape key will always bring you back to the selection tools. That's a, ki that's a killer one for me. I use that all the time. And actually, the other thing that I do quite often when I have material in the score particularly, 
is once you're in the selection tool, you can double click an element and it will switch you to that elements tool. So between that and the escape key, you can actually navigate around the tools pretty quickly without ever, ever going into the main tool palette or even using the shortcuts. In fact, the escape key is so important to me personally that one of the buttons on my mouse, I have a, a programmable Logitech mouse, is programmed to the escape key. So I can switch between tools without even using my left hand uh, just by double clicking whatever it is, getting to that tool and pressing escape to get back to the selection tool. So anyway, like I said, it is a personal choice. Figure out what works for you. A lot, a lot of people will use actually Keyboard Maestro to program uh, more tools because again, you're limited to seven uh, natively in Finale. So that's another option as well. But um, uh, you know, figure something out that works for you because that's gonna save you a lot of time. Number seven, navigational shortcuts. Um, take some time to learn some of these because uh, it's going to help you get around your files and around your score. Um, I did a whole series on uh, navigation in the beginning of the series. It's actually the, the, the very first series. And it's important to kind of know what you can do and how to get around your score. Some of the big ones for me, obviously, is Command-E will take you back and forth between scroll view and page view. So, I mean, if, if nothing else, you should know that uh, shortcut off the bat. Um, but also command option period to uh, navigate you between parts and comma will go backwards, period, comma. Uh, that's command option period and comma. And command option slash will always take you back to the score. Um, and there's a, a ton of other ones like, you know, things like command end will take you all the way to the end of the score. Command home will take you all the way to the beginning. Um, but whatever technique you use, you know, decide on something. I have a couple of scroll wheels on my uh, mouse, so that's um, a, a, another main way that I, I get around the score uh, using the scroll wheels. But whatever it is, you know, figure out what works for you and your brain and those shortcuts. And because again, there's there's so many of them, you can learn them all if you want. But you know, learn some essential ones to uh, help get around the score. That will definitely save some time. Number six, probably the most important shortcut you should know is Command Z, the undo command. Uh, there it is, and uh, it's actually the very first thing in the edit menu um, because you know you can get if you get things moved around in a certain way. Um, it can be actually kind of tedious to go back and figure out exactly where these things were. But with the Command Z, you can just keep pressing it until everything goes back to normal. So uh, again, it seems like a silly thing, but it really can be one of the most efficient things you can know how to do. And a close second would probably be Command S for save because, you know, nothing's more inefficient than having an hour and a half worth of work get completely destroyed when your computer crashes and you haven't saved your uh, file. So, yeah, those two, Command Z and Command S for sure. Um, it sounds silly, but definitely get used to using those. Number five, use the return or enter key for okaying dialog boxes. Now, one of the more charming things about Finale is that you will end up with a lot of dialog boxes stacked together like this sometimes, and it can be kind of a pain or slow to, you know, find the OK button and click it with a mouse, find the next OK button, click it with a mouse, etc. Uh, a couple things can make this go a little bit faster. The return or the enter key will always um, choose the OK button for you. The one caveat to this is that when you have a text field in the dialog box, like I do here, the return key actually won't work. It'll create a, um, a normal line return, which you don't want. But the enter key will always work no matter what. So uh, sometimes it's better to use the enter key instead of return. And if you don't have an enter key on a Mac laptop, for example, function shift return uh, will simulate the enter key. Um, the other trick to this is that by holding Command, um, it will OK all of the open dialog boxes all at once. So if I press Command Enter, you'll see all of them get uh, um, OK'd all at the same time. So that's another uh, a killer thing to know is the return or the enter for OKing dialog boxes. Number four, contextual menus. Um, several versions ago, this is probably eight, ten years ago, uh, Finale started adding contextual menus, and they really are incredibly helpful. I'm in the selection tool right now, and if I just simply right-click or control-click any measure, you'll see a whole bunch of different options that can be done here. You can ch change the, the uh, bar line to a double bar line just by doing that. You don't need to go to the measure tool, double-click, choose the double bar line, press OK. Uh, it saves a ton of time, and there's a lot of common things that you can do with this 
in this contextual menu, including change the key, the time signature. You can apply staff styles, do different re things with the repeats. Um, so really learn, first of all, this main contextual menu from the selection tool. But in addition to that, you know, any other tool will also give you um, contextual menus. If you, you know, right click a handle, you can pull up a contextual menu for things that are relevant to the uh, expression in this case. Uh, you can do the same thing with, um, you know, slurs. This is going to give you some options that are um, uh, relative to the, the slur here. And actually, you don't even need to be in the tool itself. So from the selection tool, I can right-click the Forte marking here, and I'll get those same options uh, that are available in the expression tool, right? So it's the same contextual menu. And in fact, you can contextual menu a lot of different things to pull up a lot of different uh, 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 options. So basically, this contextual menu changes depending on what you're clicking, uh, including text. I mean, it's just, you got to know these contextual menus because there's so much you can do without even switching tools. Um, and uh, it's really efficient to, uh, to work like that. So yeah, number four, contextual menus for sure. Number three, plugins, scripts, and macros. Now, this is sort of a broad topic. I'm not going to go too far in depth in it. But once you kind of get to a certain level with Finale, it's kind of important to really start looking at the plugins menu here and figuring out what can be done, what you can do with these plugins. Because there are certain things that will just make things so much faster, like the Create Coda System uh, plugin, for example, I just talked about in the Repeats series, um, is a huge time saver if you know how to do that. So, um, you know, again, once you get to a certain level, explore these plugins. And there's third-party plugins as well, including uh, the JW plugins, the uh, TG Tool plugins, which will give you a separate menu item here, uh, but also the uh, Patterson plugins, which are also great as well. And I have links to all of these on my website. So um, these third-party party plugins are really killer in some of them. So, you know, once you get to a certain level with Finale, start exploring these plugins um, because they will save you a lot of time in a lot of cases. The other thing is scripts and macros. And there's several uh, different um, ways to do this. There's Finale Script, there's Keyboard Maestro, and there's JW Lua, which is sort of new. And um, all of these things, you know, they do require a little programming on your part, but uh, you can really program some complicated scripts. I mean, I have some keyboard maestro scripts that are really extensive and, you know, you know, they can do, I think some of mine go 20, 25 steps all in one shot. So you just kind of make a selection and then choose that, uh, that macro and it does everything all at once. It's, it's kind of neat, but again, it takes a little bit of dedication and research and programming to get those. But once you have them, the efficiency gains with uh, macros and scripts is, is really, uh, really amazing. So, yeah, I, this is a broad subject, but definitely plugins and scripts and macros are, are going to be big efficiency tips here. Number two, meta tools, meta tools, meta tools. I can't stress enough how important meta tools are to the efficiency in Finale. Uh, a lot of people that consider Finale slow, I suspect don't really have a firm grasp on how to use meta tools. Um, yes, there's some switching between tools in Finale that you kind of have to manage, which I talked about previously. Um, but once you're in a tool, you can have as many uh, meta tools uh, applied to different elements as you have keys on the keyboard. And if you know what those meta tools are, you can make very short work of, of adding elements. So, you know, the dynamics, for example, I know that five will add a mezzo forte, six will add a mezzo piano. So it's really just a question of holding down a key and, uh, you know, clicking on a note to get that element there. And it's important to know some of the techniques to this, too. For example, with expression specifically, if you hold down a meta tool and click drag a selection here, you'll get that applied to the whole uh, set of staffs in this case. And uh, once you have them, um, you can now they're now selected. You can double click a different meta tool to change them all at once. So there's actually a few really uh, neat things that can be done with uh, meta tools, particularly in the expression tool. And a lot of it applies to th different things, like the articulation tool uh, works somewhat similarly. You can apply an accent all the way up and down the score, uh, somewhat in the same manner. Um, again, meta tools, meta tools, meta tools. Learn them. Learn how they work. And learn how to program them because, you know, if your file happens to use, you know, certain markings, like let's say appassionato and uh, animato, for example, let's say you go back and forth between these two uh, elements a lot. These are not currently um, uh, programmed with any meta tools, but you can reprogram any other meta tools that you're not using. Let's say you're not using the diminuendo and crescendo markings here. 
um, you can reprogram the you know this the D and the C to these two elements. And again, it's really fast just to hold down D, you get the animato, hold down C, you get the appassionato, you can go back and forth between those elements a lot faster. So yeah, meta tools, learn your meta tools, it's killer. And there's meta tools in a lot of the tools you may not even realize, but like there's meta tools in the time signature tool, there's meta tools in the key signature tool, uh, the clefts, I mean, there's just, there's meta tools everywhere. And again, I talk about it extensively throughout the series, so learn the meta tools. It's, it's really one of the most uh, efficient ways to use Finale. And my number one tip for speed and efficiency in Finale is templates, full stop. Do yourself a favor. If you don't have a template, start designing one now. Um, there's so much you can put into a template that will make using Finale so much easier. Uh, I like to think about it is that once you have a great template, using Finale is sort of like paint by numbers. All you got to do is just put in the music and so much is set up for you. The formatting can be set up. Um, the, you know, in my templates, I have a ton of different expressions. So, you know, you can add these in your template and you'll, you know, you'll never have to write, uh, you know, to acoustic again. Um, and you can set up the instruments that you need with the staff spacing and the staff uh, size, as well as the page size, the margins, all the titling. Uh, and I even will uh, pre-format my parts. So if you go to one of my parts, you'll see that I have four bars of system. Everything is nicely even spaced. Um, I even set up some blank pages in case I need them. You know, a lot of this stuff is, is done by subtraction. So I can always delete the blank uh, page here. It's a lot more challenging to add a blank page at the beginning of the score. So for me, my templates always have, you know, more stuff in it than I would need because it's easier to delete things. Um, and what you'll see here is uh, in this particular template, I'm showing you a, a sort of random collection of instruments. This is my master template. So from here, I will duplicate this file to create project specific templates. And uh, this other file I have open here is actually just my normal piano vocal template. So it's sort of based off this master template. I just copied and pasted it and deleted all the um, instruments I wasn't using, you know, kind of respaced everything, resized everything so that it looks good uh, for just the piano vocal. So um, and again, with specific projects, you can set up the instruments exactly as you need to. And even with the expressions, you know, I do a lot of musical theater. And one of the categories I have here is for character names. And this is the generic master template. So all I've got in here is character, woman, men, all. But I can, you know, put in the specific character names like Susan or John or whatever. And uh, that would also be in the template. So again, it's just it, what you're doing is you're eliminating the need to keep creating things in the file, right? I don't need to, you know, create a new expression and call it Susan. It's already there. Um, so yeah, templates, I mean, that is the key. If you have good templates, you know, that's the most efficient thing you can do. Um, as of right now, I don't have any great videos on the website about templates. It's something I'm planning to do at some point, but uh, templates is a big thing that I talk about in some of the classes that I teach, but also in some of the private lessons I've been doing. I do talk about templates a lot. So, um, you know, stay tuned because eventually it will get added to um, the, the Conquering Finale site. It's, it's a little bit farther down the road, but, um, but uh, it'll get there. So yeah, that's uh, my top 10 efficiency tips list. Uh, I hope this has helped. Uh, thanks for the suggestion, Giovanni. Um, don't forget that if you want to uh, suggest a video, you can do that. Just sign up to be a subscriber either on YouTube or on the uh, web page. You can sign up for the mailing list and uh, just send me an email and uh, give me some ideas for some more of these subscriber request videos. They've been uh, fun to do. So thanks again and uh, I'll see you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please visit www.conqueringfinale.com to find full tutorials categorized by topic. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel here, follow me on Twitter here, email me here, or you can send me Morse code, telegraphs, or smoke signals. But please, no carrier pigeons.